Jeff, I don't think you have anything to worry about with this kid today. I've been working on his form all afternoon. So you've been working with his follow through? Not follow through, form. Form, Jeff. Follow through comes later. We've been working on the important stuff. You want to show him? Yeah, sure. All right. Definitely. Strike celebration number one. So guys, maybe the championships, but just treat it like another game out there, you know? Just carry yourselves like professionals. Like their team? Mm, no. No, not like their team at all. Definitely not like their team. Life is fun, and so is Candlepin Bowling. There have been dozens of bowling shows on TV before, but we're not them, and we don't want to be. Dan Shu Gothi, our coaches one team of talented kids, and I, Rob Taylor, coach another. We're a different type of show, and we're going to turn your notion of bowling show upside down. We are the new generation. Welcome to Candlepin New Generation, a show that treats all its contestants as winners, except for the runners-up. Winning is for losers, Rob. That they are. He's Dan Gauthier. I'm Rob Taylor. You're watching the best bowlers in New England compete on our show. Dan's got one team. I've got another. Dan, who you got? I got the team of Michael Bullseye McGinty and Jeff Surrett. Uh, one is a new, a new kid bowling and who's going to be a legend soon, and the other one's an existing legend. Michael McGinty threw a 192 a few weeks ago, 167 on one of our shows a couple weeks ago, and on a show that we aired just last week, he went off and threw a 157 rod. Almost unstoppable. His partner, Jeff Surrett, long time pro, more titles than I could count, just threw a 150 on our show last week. As a team, they hit 307. I don't see how your team stands a chance. It's going to be a tall task, but I think we're up for it. Kevin Jones, out of Alley Cat, 17-year-old, high single 186, high triple 419. He's an ICBA All Events winner, and he's bowling with Jonathan Boudreau, a multi-time ICBA All Events winner. He's 190 high single, high triple of 455. He's only 18, and yet he won this tournament last year. To provide you with just a little bit more analysis, we're going to the third member of our broadcast team, Liam Fitzgerald-Ledger. Liam, what's the scoop on this match? It all comes down to this, Rap, the championships. I talked to both teams earlier and they both said they wanted to win. And now we know. Time for the bowlers. Michael McGinty's up first. Kevin Jones is up second. Mike's in the black. Kevin is in the red. Two talented teams of youngsters bowling with two great professionals. I think we're going to be in for a heck of a match. Mike McGinty, tough half Worcester out of the gates. Kevin Jones buries his head pin, leaving the triangle. And now this gives us a chance to take a look at the keys to the game. My team's key, stay even keel. It's the championships, but don't let the pressure get to you. You're great bowlers. I think they're going to do just fine if they're throwing their ball. Dan, what's your key to the game? Well, it's an old adage, Rob, but it's true now more than ever. Defense wins championships. There's, there's no defense in bowling, Dan. Well, yeah, with a mindset like that, there isn't, Rob. All right, now McGinty's trailing by four. Tough early leaf for him. Kevin Jones with a nice 10 box. McGinty's just going to clear the wood out of his gutter now. We'll take a look at how Mike got here. Last week, he threw a gigantic 157 score. Strikes, marks all the way down the page. McGinty threw a 167 on our show earlier this season. And so that gives him a 163.5 average on Candlepin <laughs> New Generation this is that, year. Is that all? That's all. You sure he's still bowling Candlepin? <laughs> we'll see if he's able to catch up to that in this match. Nine boxes. He's got about 160 pins to go, so we'll see how he does. <laughs> Mike, a little off the head pin. He's had a long wait. He's got a little iced in between matches. Jones off the head pin. Wood flying forward. I tell you, I don't really like Jones's wood on this one, though. It's not really going to help him. Mike's having a little trouble finding that head pin. He's been on it all day. And we've had two matches full of fireworks early on. Right now, it seems like these two teams are going to need to jab each other to try to get a feel for it on the lanes before their talent takes over. Kevin, now he's got a ball in the gutter. Kevin's he's, he's trying to wait for, for assistance. It to be cleared, and the, our help that clears it was waiting for him to throw the third ball. He's going to go down and get the ball now, though. And sometimes the bowlers do want to have it taken out before they throw their third ball, even though it's not in the way, because it can be a distraction to the corner of their eyes. Peripheral vision, Rob. Now Kevin looking for the out. Wood's going to be tricky. Plays it high, and that's a good yeah, nine. It's a, it's a great play. I mean, that's where you want to play to make a 10 out of it. So looking for the first mark of the match. Was it? Oh. Mike McGinty. Known for that powerful first ball. He threw a triple strike earlier this year. He gets a lot of rotation on it. Right now he's having trouble locating the head pin. It's the curse of being on Team Shoe. It'll do it. To you. Actually, I think, seriously, I think he just has been holding on just a whisker long. He just needs to let it go a tiny bit earlier. See, by holding on a little long there, the ball stays in his hand longer and goes to the left. Kevin buries that half Worcester opportunity. Not much to show for it. 
Now Mike now looking for the out. That's better. It's better. Still not where he wanted to be, but better. See him reach down there. He's quickly picking up the ball after he threw it. Tough boxes there for both sides. So neither team really able to take advantage of the early struggles of the opposition. Isn't this uh, what you often see in Candlepin bowling, right? You have your monster score. You come back and can't find the headpin sometimes. And then when you do find the headpin, you're looking at a three and one split. On the other side, Kevin looking for action, looking for a makeable spare leave. This is going to be an interesting one. Where are you playing it, Dan? For Kevin's shot? Yes, sir. Oh, boy. I mean, I think you have to try the left side down there where the seven pin would be and hope that the front wood can somehow carry the right pin. And it, look Could at he that. have thrown I mean, anything else at that six pin? And we hit it right where I said, and you just hope that something takes a six pin. Uh, I don't think this is a six pin, nine pin, probably. Kevin looking for the 10. He's on it. We'll take another look at that spare bid by Jones throwing the kitchen sink at that pin, but nothing able to carry it. And so it's an early seven pin deficit. Mike McGinty looking to find his ball out of the gate. He found the head pin last time. He finds it, finds it again. It's the best ball he's throwing this half, and uh, he's rewarded, which is good. Kevin a little bit off. Both of our bowlers looking to live up to their semifinal billings. It's been a long day here at Candlepin New Generation. It's McGinty, no yeah. luck at all. I, I, he would have had the shot without the wood. The wood, I mean, he hit the pin where he needed to for the ball to go and carry the five, but then the wood got in the way of the ball carrying the five. And McGinty looking for the 10. He's on it. This is so depressing Mc for McGinty. You can tell he thought that shot was going to go. A tough out for Kevin. So despite the tough half by McGinty, it's only a four-pin difference. All right. He cut the lead almost in half on that one. That's why it's so important to throw your 10s. And now this is a treat. Jeff Surrett, 30 years old, has numerous bowling titles, considered by many to be one of the best in the game, against an up-and-comer in Jonathan Boudreau, 18 years old. These two just duked it out at the ICBA Championships, finishing 1-2. Yeah, you could you could easily argue that as of right now they may be the best in the game in the states at least. We did have Canadians in the ICBA championship too, so you could say in the world. But between that, the Easter Classic, these two consistently finish one two at the world's tournaments. Both their averages are typically top right in that top five time, for the week. Yep. It really is something to see. I mean, I've been saying for four or five years now how good Jonathan Boudreau is, and until you watch him bowl, you don't don't realize it. Nice 10 by Surrett. John's waiting for either someone to get that ball. That ball's going to make it all the way back down the lane, I think. Nice straight lane. <laughs> it's not tilted at all. <laughs> Boudreaux looking for the 10. And he's now, on it, so a pair of 10. So now all of our bowlers have gotten past that long layoff, and hopefully they're going to be right in the pocket the rest of the way through. They're on an even playing field, both looking for that first mark of the match. Let's go to four horsemen right side. Boudreaux on the right side. A couple more uncharacteristic headpin misses. Both looking to get into a groove up there. Flow's been difficult. Surrett and McGinty certainly had it in their match last week. He's still looking for our first mark of the match after throwing, I'd like to count up how many we had last week. Two weeks of fireworks 30. we've had. Now <laughs> both teams playing a little gentleman's candle pin up there. Still a nice out for Surrett, though. And that's important. That's what you see the good bowlers do is find ways to get big outs out of the boxes where they're not throwing a good ball. Both oh. of these guys. That's a pretty shot by <laughs> Boudreaux. How do you even describe that? Talk about getting outs. We'll take another look at that one. Boudreaux kissing the wood, sliding it over, and somehow taking out the 10. But pinning often is what separates some of the great bowlers from some of the lesser ones. We talk about all those big shots, the big spares, the big strikes like that one by Right Tourette. on cue. Right on cue. And these guys can do with the best and of them. Is Boudreaux looking to answer. tried to match it. Doesn't was carry right the four. In there. Wobbled it. It struck the four. Now he wants to be on that pin. That Right would, would carry it if he hits it flat, but that would be he's a missed a, a shot. He doesn't so want to be there. It should be, shouldn't hurt. Uh -oh. He is over there, and he picks it up. I was going to say I would expect him to be on that pin less than if he was a righty where his ball would have to swing by it on the way by, but uh, he knows he got away with one there, Rob. He was smiling his brains out on his way back to the lane there. That's where when you, you, you miss by enough to make it. If you miss by less than you cap it, you don't get it. Boudreaux's not off much on those single pins. And there's one of those so he interesting deserves the gifts here and there. Spread right eagle like balls where the pins go up and come back down and take some more. Speaking of gifts, Rob. Seven pin drop. And if you have been watching our show over the past couple of weeks, you'll have seen some of those pins flying back from behind the curtain. The reason is that the pin setter is higher here at Lanes and Games. And so it creates some very awkward opportunities, as you see there. Balls and it's pins getting action seconds after the ball hits the lane. This bowling ball went back and touched the final pin on the alley and didn't knock it over. And he is going to have to wait for a runner to go retrieve that ball. You can't shoot at a bowling ball in can up in bowling. Surrett now going for the 10. Not an easy 10. And he plays it high. That well, was the spot. Well, well played. Well played. You couldn't just hit the wood in the middle and expect to get it. 
Boudreaux looking for the out as well. He's all over it. So both of our bowlers heating up a little bit here. We talk about pinning. Only one pin standing so far in this half by our two pros. Three pins, actually. My apologies. Three pin lead, he's saying. Uh, three pin lead right now for Kevin and J-Bomb. Surrett drops another hammer. Boudreaux looking to answer, and he does. That's a very nice way for us to go into our half. We'll be looking for more strikes after the break. Woburn Bulladrome, established in 1940, has 40 lanes with automatic scoring, including bumper lanes, glow bowling, and more, featuring four different birthday party packages. If you bring the cake, we'll do everything else, including food, drink, and paper goods. Come spend your Friday and Saturday nights with us when the lights go off and the music and fun go on. Enjoy our game room, check out our pro shop, or join a winter league. We're right by I-93 and I-95 with plenty of parking available. Woburn Bulladrome. For more info, go to www.woburnbowl.com. Thanks for coming to my league, Jeff. No problem, Nate. I promise to exercise and eat right. Don't forget, 60 minutes of a long day, right? And I'll grow up to be big and strong like you? Absolutely. And play in the Pro Series? Yes, sir. And be drafted on your Worlds team? Maybe. And become the new anchor bowler for Lucky Strike? Okay. And you can be my sub? Excuse me? And make bowling fans forget about you? And become your mom's favorite bowler? Whoa. Just loosening my arm. Welcome back to Candlepin New Generation. Three pins is the difference. We're going to quickly go to Liam Fitzgerald Ledger for a sideline report. You say the crowd's really electric, Liam. The crowd's on their feet, Rob. That's because this is a bowling alley. All the chairs are upstairs at the restaurant. Oh, and there you have it. Kevin Jones now on lane three. He's the one sporting the three-pin lead. Go get him, Kevin. Both of our boys are warmed up now. I think you're going to see a much bigger, bigger second half than you saw first. That's a though. great first ball out of the gates by both of them. McGinty getting oh, the action. That's that kind of action you only see at a house like this one that where the pin setters leave a lot of extra space for the wood to go straight up and come down and turn a spread eagle into a makeable spare. Typically, it would have been a spread eagle plus minus right the 10-pin. Instead, McGinty picks it up, and that's what he needed to do. Mike starting to settle in in the second half. That's true. In, in Mike McGinty's last game that he appeared on our show, Rob, he marked every box in his second half to finish with six in a row. And he's starting off the same way here this game. Second half bowler, he seems to be. It seems like he's once he gets his feel on the lane. Once he's found it. Yes, uh, McGinty is missing a pin. McGinty now looking for the fill. There it is. Stays on, on that head pin. pin. Ooh, that pin almost fell back. He'll take the eight. That gives him a five pin lead. Jones looking to steal one, hits the head pin, but goes through it. I think Jones is, is aware now that this match could start to get out of hand if he doesn't start marking. Well, McGinty misses that opportunity, yeah. so we're going to keep this thing single digits. I didn't expect him to miss the way he was going. Well, he's he's going to get on his roll. McGinty picks up the 10, Caps continuing to gain pins. Turned it around for a seven pin lead for Team Shoe. I don't know that I've said that this year, Rob. Yeah, I don't think you've ever been leading this season. No? Oh, no. man. We don't panic, though. Team Rob doesn't panic. Jones on the head pin. McGinty as well. I'd be nervous if I were you. I would certainly prefer Mike's leave here, Jones. Well, as long as the wood doesn't keep rolling on Mike, you don't want it to get in front and block your shot there. That's fine, but don't go any farther. Jones, he may want to try to cap that wood and, and hit the... I say just cut it, shoe. I say just cut it all over it, Jones. McGinty answers playing the wood. Let's take another look at both of those shots. Team Rob earning their spare. Team Shoe. Getting a little gift. Well, we'll have to talk to him since he'll probably be with the uh, losing bracket afterwards and ask him if he tried to play it that way. I like this spot. McGinty right back on the head pin, and you got to give him credit. He always seems to do that. Mike, four head pins the second half, and once again, he's proving he's a you good take second a quick half look bowler. At this and think McGinty's shot's a little better. However, I've seen this five pin cluster go all day. Not Kevin just time. off. McGinty just off as well. McGinty had a little leeway there on the right side, you may have think, yeah. being a little too fine. The wood is up farther than it would typically be on a shot like that, and I don't know if it would have... Well, I guess it would have carried the 10. Maybe he's got wood flying all the way back. back on the lane. Yeah. <laughs> we'll quickly retrieve that. Both bowlers in the ninth box. We've got Kevin at 84. Mike McGinty, 93. 
tenth One indifference. Kevin looking to get a little momentum to his partner. So McGinty pounds it again. Five boxes, five head. He pins. throws up his hands, thinking it'll knock the pin over. He tried he had to, the hammer. Tried to will it down. You were teaching him those type of dances and warm-ups. I've been teaching him moves. Stand. Kevin's a little off, looking to steal it. Mike all over his, and so Mike is going to be handing his partner a very handy lead here going into the half. Stays focused too after he makes that. You can see he turned around, had a very determined look on his face. <laughs> Pretty ten by Kevin. Yeah, that's worth another look. Kevin, a little bit off, but we mentioned here, anything can happen on these lanes. You just got to give the pins a chance. And so now Mike, working on that 10-pin lead, looking to bolster it. And late Ooh, action. Rare spread eagle. Don't see that often. And so 14 pins, the difference. What, which is big, because 14 is about what I would consider two average fills. If he fills it with nine, you're looking at almost having to get three marks. So the fact that he got a spread eagle could and with, come into play. With a typical pro, I would say 14 pins would be difficult. With Jonathan Boudreaux... There's only one thing I'm thinking right now, and it is double strike. He did it last. He did it two weeks ago. Oh, he he did it last on, yeah. season. Both bowlers on a strike. Both bowlers on a strike. So a lot can change in this box. Boudreaux off the head pin. Uncharacteristic. Double. double here for Jeff would start to put him well in the lead. Jeff buries that head pin. Carries Everything two huge extra pins. Leaning seven. And now Boudreaux on the spare, looking to carry that five. Pins flying from the heavens, but won't take it. Five wobbling. And so now I see no way Jeff misses this shot, Dan. Nice call, Rob. <laughs> way to jinx my team. Boudreaux's going to look to capitalize. He takes the 10. I'm put a muzzle on you for the next single pin. Still a 14 pin difference. 14 pin match. Boudreaux's got to be grateful. Four boxes to try to pick that lead back up. Boudreaux's done some major comebacks before in his career, in his young Ooh. career, mind you. He wants that wood to get out of the that's way. Now nice, that's a makeable spare well. leave. If that wood creeps in, eh, it's got a little trickier. Threat right back on that head pin, right back with another spare leave. Now if I'm Boudreau, I might be playing that wood on the left to try to bounce it over. I think the way that wood is angled behind the five pin, yeah. if Boudreau hits the flat wood on the left, that wood right along the five pin is going to fly right into the ten. Let's take a look. A little high. He may have wanted to go there. Maybe a little bit lower. Off the cap, perhaps. Uh, Jeff, I think, is going to be going basically almost right at the 10 pin and just hope to catch the top of that wood. Yeah, as long as he doesn't hit the cap, he should be all right. And that's the spot. Thing of beauty there by Soret. Boost the lead up to 15 and a ball. And so now things starting to get dire for Boudreau. Three boxes to try to defend his title from last season. Last year, Jonathan Boudreau did it with Anthony Delmonico. Anthony Delmonico has graduated. I believe he's at the University of Syracuse, as a matter of fact. Yeah, Monica. yeah, he did go up there. I was hoping to see him on the Pro Series, but maybe we will later in the season when his college takes a break. Surrett looking for the head pin off it, but he was just looking for the count there, and that yeah, one puts it into the 20s. Got a good count. Boudreau looking to make a brutal spare leave. His leave is probably easier than Boudreau's was. Just be right into one two pocket here, or play the head pin on the right side. On it, doesn't carry it. A little too light on the right side. Head pin went right around the two. And Boudreau was seeing some frustrated body English. This has been a tough match for him. Had a little trouble establishing footing out of the gates, and then a couple of challenging spare leaves. Have left this match in the 20s. Two boxes to go. It's going to take quite the comeback. Typically, you need a double at some point in ninth or tenth or, or both. Boudreau on the head pin. Looking to carry an extra. If he spares here and then comes back with a double in the tenth, that would be his only That's legitimate a, shot. That wood is tough. Surrett buries it. Not making it easy for Jonathan. Although <laughs> both of these leaves are very tough. I I'm Boudreau. I have no clue where I'm playing this. Maybe way up high. Hope Won't the ball carry comes it. back down. Looking for the little and late action. He carries it. What That'll a keep read. alive. <laughs> and that's, well read. That's one of the things that sets Boudreaux apart is that he can just see things that we can't see. It's and right like a there, chess a brilliant master. Shot. Six moves ahead. Surrett looking to answer. Looking for the cut shot. He went for it. Give him credit. It's, it's almost, I don't say it's important because he has a 24 pin lead, but you'd like to take one of these pins, protect yourself against the seven box. Start with the first one. There you that's go. That's a nice nine. Yeah, now he just so seven or eight, and it forces Boudreaux to have to double. 23 strike the difference. Strike here for Boudreaux. Would Boudreaux's make you think that it's possible. Got the look in his eye. Looking for the head pin hit. Buries the Brooklyn pocket. Oh. Looking to carry the five. He does it. <laughs> On demand. And so like, this keeps the crowd excited. Like your local cable company. Surrett still has the chance to close. On the head pin. And that's exactly, that's exactly what, Boudreaux what Boudreaux wanted needed. to see. Exactly. Although, well, no. Oh, that almost made it worse. 
He's got the chance to try to slide that over, and the way balls and pins fly at this bowling center, Another something could Another consideration for him is he needs to get at least one pin here. Go for the two? Well, no, he just want to go for the one. If, there you go. That's what I think he wants to do, Dan. Yeah. Brilliant shot by Jeff. It That's why he's one of the best. And it doesn't lock the game up yet. If Boudreaux throws a double, which he was going to have to do anyway, he's just going to need to outfill him on the third ball by four or five pins. On the head pin, looking to tumble him. Everything but the Leaves a pin. solid eight, and that's going to do it. But a Crazy attempt at a comeback by Boudreaux. And Surratt throwing the victory ball there. Would have been enough to seal it up anyway, even with the double. Got to give Boudreaux credit for making things interesting at the end. An impressive match by our two sides, but Jeff Surrett and Mike McGinty are the winners of our 2013 Pro Kid Championship. Join us as we talk to them after the break. Academy Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts is one of the largest candle pin centers in the world. Bring your family and friends to our 48-lane facility with a pinball and video arcade, kino and lottery tickets, and snacks, beer, and wine available. Drop by on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday afternoon or night for Glow Bowling, where the lanes are rocking with a state-of-the-art lighting and sound system. Have your next birthday party with us. We provide a fun, inexpensive atmosphere for any size party in Glow or regular bowling. For more info or to join a men's, ladies, junior, or senior league, check out academylanes.com. So for the show this year, Dan, I really want it to be about empowering the kids, you know? For kids, by kids. By kids? How's that going to work? Positions, people, positions, people, places, people, places. All right, guys, pizza's ready. Pizza! Woo! So, what's it like bowling with the pros? A lot of fun, because you get, like, you can learn how to, like, throw the ball correctly and stuff, and they can teach you what you're doing wrong. That's good. I was trying to embarrass him, but I can't. He gets, like, strikes constantly. I think it's fun because you get to bowl with pros like than you don't before, and um, it's just more fun to see pros bowl and see how good they are. And if you don't know them, I can't, I get nervous every game, so it's kind of like getting more and more nervous. So this is your first time meeting co-host Dan Gothier. Yes. And what's that like? Funny. Oh no, he thinks he's funny. Don't tell him that, it'll just go to his head. Comfortable, it's good, you can watch them, they can watch you, you can give them tips, they can give you tips. Oh, wow, shots fired at his own father. We're gonna, we're gonna have to put this. I beat my dad today. Why, what's your dad got so far? A 126 and a 119. I got him by three. And then how's he feel about that? He's proud of me, I'm guessing. Welcome back to Candlepin New Generation. Tough to beat for my team out there. I thought you guys bowled well, hung in until the end. Kevin? Start with you. Seemed like you had a little trouble out of the gates there, and then you picked it up a little bit later. What was the challenges in the beginning of the match? Uh, just felt a lot of pressure and nervous. First time in the finals of anything for this, and then didn't do too great. I thought you did fine out there. You're going to have a chance to, in the future to try it again. We hope you'll be back on our show. You were picking things up in the second half a little bit. Were there any adjustments you made up there in the lanes? McGinty doing better. Made me feel pressure. Tried to Tried to match him, but... Couldn't reach up to him. Did it feel like that brought out the best in you a little bit? Yep. Well, it's still an impressive day you had. Making it all the way to the finals is no slouch, and we hope we'll see you again. John, you're looking for the magic at the end of that match. What was going through your head in the ninth? Well, I didn't know. I really didn't know what the lead was. I mean, after the strike, you know, I turned around to ask what it was. I just, I, I threw too many mystery balls in the first half, you know, that, that kind of hurt, you know. I had a couple easy ones that I went by, and, you know, I ended up, probably would have needed a triple in the last box just about, so... You know, it's just too little, little, too little, too late, I guess. You gave it a run. What does uh, you're always throwing fireworks in these last boxes in these matches. Does it seem like? Do you feel more confident when you're trying to close? I, you know, I, I really don't know what it is in the last five boxes. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's because I know the match is going to be ending. I don't know, but <laughs> just happy to get out of the match. I don't know, but yeah, that's just the way it happens, I guess, for some. Well, you kept things exciting for our crowd. It was an impressive display by you guys. You guys had a heck of a day making it all the way to the finals. We were impressed, and I think you both have bright futures. You're only two years older than Kevin here, yeah. so you got plenty of years to do this again. So congratulations to you guys. Now I'll send it over to Shu with the winners.
Thanks, Rob. I'm here with our championship team. That feels so good to say. I've been doing the Canopin Bowling Show for kids for 11 years now, and in that 11 years, I can't recall ever a kid bursting on the scene like Mike McGinty has in the past month. Mike, what's it been like the past month with all the monster scores you've been throwing? Uh, it's kind of been a little crazy because I, it just started one day after good game 192 it just kept coming 181 151 everything above 150 and it just kept happening just kept coming does it feel real do you wake up in the morning wondering if this is really happening <laughs> sometimes like after 192 180 it's like did i really just do that <laughs> you've just won two matches can you think of anything that you've changed in the last couple months that may have started this string of monster games that you've been throwing Probably staying relaxed when everyone's watching, because I used to get really worked up and nervous when everyone's watching. I've just started relaxing like it's just a regular game. I have noticed after you throw marks, you seem to have this intense, calm look on your face, which probably helps. Yeah. Don't get too excited, right? Staying calm, yeah, that helps. And, and your partner, Jeff, I mean, you certainly got a good draw today. Jeff, I was talking to somebody, and they pointed out, we've been doing this format with the adults and kids three straight years, and they told me you've run into Boudreaux all three times at some point during your race to the top. He had one, you had one, and today he broke the tie. Uh, are you getting sick of seeing him in all these finals? Yeah, yeah, you know, but he, uh, he bowled good, you know. This guy carried me all day, so that was fun and uh, just a great event. I understand you've had recent success, too, for the uh, the, the championships for the ICBA, right? And uh, Reminiscent, didn't you run into Boudreaux again there? I might have, yeah. Yeah, he had, uh, say, one bad game, and uh, it was just enough for me to sneak away with it. Now, what do you think of this guy, Mike McGinty? Do you think you'll be seeing him in some of these finals with the adults pretty soon? Uh, I know it, and uh, when he starts showing up, I'm going to stay home. <laughs> it has been impressive. Both of you guys, especially last week, the scores you guys put up, we knew it was going to be hard to duplicate today, but you came out, and you threw enough to win, and you finally got me off the snide, give me a 1-5 and five record with Team Shoe, and I can't thank you enough for that. Congratulations. Uh, fantastic bowling. So we'd like to thank you all for watching what was another fantastic match. We hope you'll join us again next week with our 11 and under championship from Pilgrim Lanes. Until then, this is Dan Gothier with our championships team saying thanks for watching. Please join us again next week from Lanes and Games in Cambridge. Goodbye. How'd you get the nickname The Godfather? He gave it to me. I kind of thought that's what the answer was going to be. Double strike? Double strike. The lane only gave him a nine because even the lane didn't believe he threw a double strike. I think he is rooting for you to fail this last game so he can beat you. Probably not. You got enough pins to make it on the show. Yeah. You, you don't need a big last game. You let the old man win. I'd like a big last game. So we hope you join us again next week where we'll have our 11 and under championship from Pilgrim Lanes. Until what? <laughs> so we'd like to thank you all for watching and we hope you join us again next week where our 11 and under championship will will come from just got double check no one more time oh, one more time <laughs>